also ask you, though, about this extraordinary poll carried out by the Henry Jackson Society. It was a, a, a poll which um, shows, I mean, frankly, I think shocking, shocking support uh, for Hamas in this country. I'm still quite shocked, actually, by the wider population in terms of the figures on this, uh, uh, on these figures. But one, just one in four British Muslims, according to this poll, carried out by a JL Partners, that used to be the former Downing Street uh, uh, polling uh, pollsters, one in four British Muslims believe that Hamas committed murder and rape in Israel on October the 7th. Uh, the others don't or don't know. That's um, um, sh much, much lower than the, the average Britain, although I like to say the average Britain, it's still only in the 60s, which I still find terrifying. But even more shockingly, 46% of British Muslims said they sympathise with Hamas. Um, what's your reaction to that? Yeah, it was a really interesting poll. There was also a, a question about um, should it be prohibited to, you know, have a, have an image of, of the Prophet Muhammad. Obviously, it shouldn't be prohibited. That's absurd. A, a third. Um, a, might... Was it a third or yeah. so? No apologies. No, over yeah. half. 52% of British Muslims yeah. want it to be illegal in this country to show a picture of Prophet Muhammad. That's compared to just 16% of the public. Also, a third would like to see Sharia law implemented in the UK. What, what do you make of all of those results? Yeah. Well, I, the Sharia law thing, I mean, it's just obviously silly. UK law should be applied in the UK. In terms of the Prophet Muhammad, I think, obviously, it's, it's ridiculous. I, I don't go out of my way to offend anybody. But clearly, you shouldn't be prohibiting an image. I think that's just nonsensical. It runs completely counter to the best traditions of this country. I would say, and I know it's something that people on the right disagree with, I think this is why we need a codified constitution enshrining freedom of speech and fr enshrining freedom of political conscience. Come, come. And like the United States, it should be a small document taught to all kids. It can fit in your pocket. And if somebody says something as stupid and moronic as that, you can say, you well, can well look, it. here's our constitution. I, if you I don't would, like it, leave. I would agree with you on all of that. But what do you make of the idea that... The, the, the a large, large minority, 46% of British Muslims, almost half of people living in this country, many of whom, and it's this more preponderance of this among younger and, weirdly, among higher educated Muslims in this country. So large people who've been brought up in this country, second or third generation uh, Muslims in this country, or maybe even longer, um, that they sympathise with a prescribed terrorist organisation, Hamas, that committed the atrocities they committed, undoubtedly, on the 7th of October. What does that tell us and what do we need to do about it? Well, it's obviously a very shocking statistic. Um, and I think the problem is that many people sympathise with what's going on in Gaza. They, they sympathise with the fact that 13,000 children have been killed. Um, and you can choose to blame who you like, but that's, that's happened. And I think people are shocked by that and they, and they want to express that sympathy. Of course, it's wrong to, it's wrong to then say, well, I, I support Hamas, right? You know, I don't think they did anything wrong on October the 7th. Uh, that's obviously wrong. And I think really it boils down to having a much better, more healthy media conversation in this country, which, to be, to be fair to your channel, with, with Piers Morgan, when he was having people who completely disagreed coming on, there are a few exceptions which I wasn't a fan of, but by and large, I thought that was really positive. And I think that's what you need more of. I think people need to be confronted with opinions they don't necessarily agree with. That applies to all communities, colours and creeds. The, 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 the statistic, that particular data point in itself is absolutely shocking. And I, like I say, I think. But what do we? What do we? Well, I mean, yes, we need to talk about it. We, if we don't know the extent of the problem that there are people in this country, and again, I would say a large percentage of of non-Muslims as well who appear to hold that view, certainly on the hard left, that if people hold those views. We can't tackle it unless we know it actually exists, and then we should tackle it. I'm, I don't want censorship. I think you always tackle people's bad ideas or misinformed ideas by actually confronting and talking about it publicly. But how do we? How do we get to a point when? No one in this country supports a prescribed terrorist organisation or has sympathy for them. Well, I think I think I, I, know, I think that's a strange way to look at it. So, for instance, if, if you were having what about from somebody who did think that, they might say, Julia, well, you're supporting the IDF and they're responsible for thousands of children being killed. In terms of the government has decided this organisation is prescribed, therefore nobody should have X opinions on it. I'm not so sure about that. I think there's just a basic sort of benchmark with regards to human decency, where if there's a war crime committed, as is the case on October 7th, Hamas committed a war crime, um, that should obviously not be supported by anything but a tiny minority of the country. And I, I do go back to my original answer, Julia. I do think we need a fundamental rethink about citizenship, having a written constitution, teaching people the importance yep. of freedom of speech and debate and dialogue and being able to change your mind. Because I, I think that really is the principal problem. No, very interesting point. Uh, Aaron Bastani, really appreciate you joining us, uh, for, founder of Novara Media. Thank you for that.